It is Tristan with Nerdut's Newsstand, and these new numbers came out from ICV2 and Comicron, and I want to talk about them just a little bit. I think a lot of people are misconstruing the number for their personal narrative on both sides. Like, oh, how many times do I say that? Like, everyone's like, oh my god, the comic book industry is dying because this includes Scholastic and Dogman. No, it doesn't. Oh my God, it's doing so good because it includes manga. That's not necessarily true either. I think overall it's good, but we're going to talk about it a little bit. There is so much. And I, and I've been looking at these for two days and I'm still confused. I'm not going to lie. I'm still confused. It's, I can't find the formulas. I can't find if it was adjusted or adjusted for inflation. And I did just realize this morning that they don't include discounts that the stores get. So say a book costs $3.99 and that store gets 50% off, it's going to be $2, right? But they don't adjust for that, which is fine. I'm glad I figured it out because originally I didn't think so. So let's take a look at these. But first off, something very important. Look, just look how pretty Andy Black is. I mean, really, come on. Okay, back to the numbers. Let's take a look at these a little bit one by one. I think um, ICV's to Milton Gripe and Comicron's um, John Jackson Miller do a fantastic job of this every year. Whether or not what they say, they do a great job. Like, I can't imagine all of what they went through. So, over everything... It is $1.28 billion for 2020, a 6% increase over 2019. Now, what you do have to keep in mind is that, again, this doesn't include the likes of Dog Man and stuff like that, but this is including stuff like manga, and that is what people are using, both Dog Man, which is completely factually inaccurate, and and manga um, as like, oh my God, we gotcha except for it's always been included and people aren't telling you that necessarily either. So nothing's changed from how they get numbers. Nothing's changed on how they talk about comics and comics are just not superhero comics. You really have to include everything when you're talking about comics and graphic novels and the disconnect between superhero comics and the direct market. And then, of course, the fact that book chains and bookstores are more likely to sell the graphic novel portion as compared to floppies or, or pamphlets, whatever you want to call them. So first numbers we have here are the overall charts. Now, it does look like, obviously, they took a dip in 2017, but for what it's worth, with a pandemic year, it did good last year. And still, again, that 6% increase is not due to necessarily the direct market because there was a time when their direct market had, April had zero. I, I, I think Image released three titles, but as far as shipping to the direct market, April had zero. May had a few. And then we slowly got an increase, but there wasn't really much until September, probably. A normal schedule is what I should say. And then you had the jump, of course, from DC going from, you know, Diamond, which typically is where they got all their numbers, to Lunar and UCS. So it's a mess. I can't even imagine how hard it must have been to actually get all these numbers this year and specifically. So let's look at this one. Obviously, that's just a general thing. So for book channels, and that includes the likes of Amazon or um, big, you know, big bookstores, they're not going to sell graph or floppies. They're just not. So we're talking about manga, who had a massive increase when it comes to the likes of Demon Slayer and uh, Jujutsu Kaisen and a bunch of others that were put on Netflix and Hulu. And I hate to break it to some people that, you know, kind of claim the whole reason that manga exploded is because it's not woke. When that may be 5% of it, 3 to 5% of it, it's not. It's because they've got that market of kids. Think about any general YouTube channel. Mine. I, I won't get views because comics is such a niche market. Now, if you switch over to something like toys or unboxings or something like that, if you can get that kid market, you're going to you're going to absolutely exceed anything that could be done in a niche form. So yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So comic stores, then we've got 440 million digital downloads, which, 
you know, a lot of it could be because of something like Shonen Jump, which is only $2. Um, and it also is stuff like Comixology or the fact that there wasn't a lot in print for a few months and that increases and that did increase uh, quite a bit this year. So that's really good. And then other channels that includes crowdfunding and the likes of that, which increased a lot also, which is awesome. Crowdfunding has become a major source for a lot of people. I support quite a few crowdfunded projects. A lot of time I'll support them under a fake name because there are some people I don't trust. But I do have a um, review coming up in the, well, I'm waiting till my channel's back on that I'm going to do of a crowdfunded project plot holes. I absolutely loved it. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to wait though. I'm going to hold off a little bit. So it does say this. Um, I think this is really important. Um, the comic periodical market was ahead for the year before the pandemic struck, which was like 187 million, something like that. Um, and the result of pr the production cutbacks was that 30% fewer comics were released as compared to the year before, right? But um, it says the fact that new comic sales were down by only 20% suggests that retailers did well with what they were able to get. That's huge. That's a, I mean, it's relatively huge. Not, okay, I mean, I don't like using words when I'm talking about sales numbers like huge or breakthrough or something like that because it incites that kind of emotional reaction. But it is a big number. And it does suggest that back issues really sold during that time. And people were still supporting their local comic book shop. So that really helps also. And the fact that there were so many less comic book shops open only show how good they actually did this year as comparatively to years before or something is working out right, whether it's marketing or something like that. Something's working. So Graphic novels at $835 million again, including those titles like Demon Slayer that have sold amazing. But it's also including stuff like Three Jokers, which sold really, really well, too. Comic books, again, back to floppies, $285 million, which is down slightly in a pandemic year. That is to be expected. And then digital sales, again, through the roof. So um, this is a lot to kind of talk about and look at and go, well, why did this, you know, what did they do this year as compared to the rest, excluding anime or manga? What was different and what can we learn from anime and manga? What can we learn from the way their source material compares to their stuff on like the Hulu or the Netflix? And how can we, kind of maybe mimic that trend, right? Because if you can get kids in the YA graphic area, so the likes of stuff I've reviewed, whether it's, oh my God, um, Gotham High, which wasn't good, but there's a lot of really good ones. Nora and Victor was a really good one. I just finished Ivy Thorns. It wasn't bad. It wasn't great. There's one I'm reading right now that is um, <laughs> Johnny Constantine and the Meanest Teacher. It's so fucking cute. I love it. You need to learn how to keep those people. So what I think the disconnect is, is between YA and older reading groups is the difference in the the absolute huge difference in style of writing and reading in art. So if you have something like, um, well, I just used the Johnny Constantine one. That one I, I would say is very good. That one I think could keep those people coming back. But if you're looking at something like Gotham High, no. It's just not. You have to look at something and want that and kind of mimic what anime is doing. And that is keeping their source material very true to then the uh, animation that we see done, right? And you have to hook them when they're early, when they're kids, because my God, I've never seen anything quite explode like anime. And kids go through this, right? Kids go through their own little... um uh uh, trends there for a while it was minecraft and then it was creepy pastas and now it's anime yeah oh you don't forget fortnite like these are huge things you've got to learn how to incorporate different elements of these things to get people familiar with those faces 
Right now we're seeing DC do a good job with that, with crossing over with Fortnite, not only in the comics, but in the actual game. You need to keep a presence on social media, whether it's something like TikTok, bring in the young cosplayers, do, you know, different sort of maybe... I don't know, different sorts of giveaways or, you know, who is the best this, who is, you, you got to keep that interest up and you got to keep your brand out there. And I think they're slowly learning and we're seeing that in the direct market, but there's also really cool stuff like this. I thought this was awesome. I, I love that we're seeing stuff done like this. I know that's nothing to do with kids, but I just wanted to show it because it's so sweet. And then of course, back to the numbers, but there's a lot to unpack here. Um, I may wait till I get my um, uh, channel back up. And I'm planning on doing some sort of crossover with Perch. So I may bring them on for this. I may not. It may be something else. But as of right now, it does it take away altogether. Is It's good. It's good. There just needs to be a learning curve. And you have to have people in the industry willing to learn use that learning curve instead of pretending like everything is perfect when I would say everything is decent. It just needs a little bit of a twist, right? So anyways, let me know, of course, what you guys think. And, and I will leave you with something pretty. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.